principal surveillance compound. Um, today we're going to start with uh, drawing Lewis structures of polyatomic ions. Okay. Um, so uh, the way that you do this uh, is fairly similar to the way that you build uh, covalent molecules. Uh, so let's just uh, do a little review from last time. Um, let's try to build uh, CH4. Okay, so um, in most compounds, a uh, few rules apply. You want to put the most electronegative atom in the middle and hydrogens and halogens around the outside. Okay? Um, so in this case, of course, we only have a C and four H's. So um, you're going to put the H's all around the edges and the C in the middle. Okay? The first thing you do is you draw the chemical symbol, and then you put uh, your valence electrons around it. So if you recall, carbon has four valence electrons. So the way we do this is draw one, two, three, four, like that. Again, uh, hydrogen can only make one bond, so it has to be on the outside, because you can't, you can't have a hydrogen atom looking like this that would be making two bonds, okay? So um, all the hydrogen atoms have to be on the outside, and conveniently enough, there's four of them, and this carbon atom needs four more valence electrons to fill its octet for the sharing of the electrons, right? So what I would do is go ahead, draw hydrogen there, hydrogen there, hydrogen there, And then recall the types of arrows I want, I want you to make. Uh, they're a little bit different than the arrows that um, are shown in the examples in the book. Um, what I would like you to do is one-sided arrow. So that electron goes there and combines with that electron. Okay. And remember, through this process of sharing, both uh, of the valence uh, shells of each of these atoms is now full. Remember when two electrons um, are paired up in between two atoms, uh, we call that a bond, and we uh, make a new symbol for that bond. Uh, it's just a line between those two atoms. So it would be something like that. But in this case, we've got one, two, three, four shared pairs. So we're going to go Okay, so does everybody recall how to do that? Okay, so I remember this is a review. This is what we did last time. So let's take a step forward and uh, try to do uh, bless you, polyatomic ions now. Okay, so let's try to do this first polyatomic ion up there on the left. And um, in fact, in, in the book, they usually have brackets around these things and show the positive charge as the whole thing has the positive charge. I'd like you to think about where which atom, because, because that positive charge is actually located on a specific atom. I'd like you to start thinking about which atom that positive charge is actually located on. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Uh, through similar rules that I give you on the uh, lecture slides, but I, I think I like to describe it, well, we'll keep that up there. I think I like to describe it a little differently so you can get a little different perspective on it. Okay? Um, so for NH4, NH4 plus, okay, you're going to do the exact same analysis that you did for CH4. Uh, remember, uh, the H's have to be, they can't be in the center, they can't be in the center atom, so they're all around the perimeter, okay? So, when we put our atoms, atoms down on the piece of paper, the first thing you want to do is write the central atom down, so that's the N. Of course, if you look up at uh, the periodic table, it'll uh, indicate to you that Nitrogen has five valence electrons, so we're going to draw our five valence electrons just like we would for carbon. One, two, three, four, five, like that. And now we need to place our uh, four hydrogens 
around that nitrogen, just like we did for carbon. So, one. And remember, hydrogen only has one valence electron. Two. Three. And four. Okay? So, notice there's a little bit of a difference between this, this compound here this compound over here, right? The carbon central atom has four valence electrons, but the nitrogen has five. <coughs> but this is going to be um, taken care of because, of course, you can't have three electrons in a bond. That's, that's going to be our problem here when we're looking at this structure. We're like, okay, well, this one, this one's okay, right? We can do that, so on and so forth. But when we get to here, we can't have three electrons in a bond because the bond is two electrons, okay? So what we know about the structure of the ammonium ion is that it's got an overall positive charge on it, so plus one. And if you recall, electrons are negatively charged, so what this implies is that one electron has been removed from this group of atoms, okay? So that electron is always going to be removed, um, ironically enough, from the most electronegative atom. So the most electronegative atom will always have the charge on it, whether it's positive or negative. So if we look at uh, these five atoms here, we um, and look at our electronegativity chart, um, which I don't have in front of me, but uh, you'll realize that um, nitrogen is more electronegative than hydrogen is. Okay. So in order to get that positive one charge on there, what we need to do is take one of these electrons on nitrogen and remove it. Okay? So just cross it out, or if you prefer, shoot it out over there. Okay, it's gone. So when we do that, right, when we remove an electron, we get a positive <coughs> charge. So what what's going on here is this nitrogen now has is now positively charged like that, okay? Because we've removed an electron, one of its valence electrons, okay? And now we can go ahead and bond it uh, like we did with uh, CH4 or methane. And we'll notice we've got the right amount of electrons to make the four bonds that we want plus now our positive charge because we've uh, lost that uh, valence electron from the nitrogen. Okay. So let's go ahead and draw our structure. I know we're kind of on the edge here. And so where it puts it in an overall bracket, I think you guys, I think you guys can do this uh, well enough to be able to indicate which atom actually has the charge. And in this case, of course, um, we figured that out in the previous steps. It's going to be the nitrogen. Okay? So um, hopefully everybody understands that. We're going to try another one uh, that's a little bit more difficult. Uh, we're going to try this CO3 2 minus next. Okay? So I'll leave that one up there, and we can compare that one to the one we're about to try.
by combining with that electron from the carbon. This oxygen octet can also be filled by uh, um, using that one of carbon's valence electrons. And if you'll notice, this oxygen needs how many more electrons to fill its octet? Hopefully everybody says two, right? Why? Because it has six here. And how many does carbon still need to fill its octet? So it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, right? So it needs two more as well. So what's going to happen is you're going to make what's called a double bond here. Like that. single bond, three lone pairs, and a negative charge. Like that. So that's the ion, CO, CO3 two minus. And clearly indicating which atom has the charge. Okay? Does that make sense to everyone? Hopefully that makes sense. If there's any questions, we can talk about it right now. This is just an overview. It might be a good idea. Would it make a difference if the top oxygen was on bottom? Uh, you can draw these. Okay, just like um, I can stand on my head, you know, these molecules can flip over, you know. So I could have drawn, so for example, if this was what we were drawing up there, I could draw it like this, or like this, or like this, or like this. And it's the same molecule. Just like if I stand on my head, right, I'm still peace, you know, I'm just standing on my head, okay? Or if I'm turned around, you know, I'm not a different person. I'm still peace, but I'm just turned around. So these molecules, in fact, that's what they do is they like spin and spin and spin and spin, you know? So there's, what you'll find is there's different representations of them that emphasize the things that you want to emphasize. So if I wanted to show this kind of edge on, I could turn it like that if I wanted to or something like that, okay? You'll get more of a feel for that uh, in a little bit when we start drawing structures, so, okay? Uh, any other questions about drawing polyatomic ions? Okay. Um, here are some kind of rules that might help you. It's explained a little differently in the slides than when I explained it up here. I really prefer the way that I explained it up here, uh, but uh, this might click with you too. Okay. So I'm going to let you go through those on your own. And again, uh, here are some covalent compounds. These, uh, None of these are polyatomic ions, but um, you can see methane here. The one thing I want to emphasize is that your arrows, uh, instead of double-headed arrows like the book does. I want them as single-headed arrows because that actually depicts the um, motion of a single electron as opposed to two electrons. Um, but you can see a number of structures that you might want to try on your own um, just doing this valence electron uh, sort of analysis. And remember, the valence electron is really the only thing that matters chemical reactivity. And uh, there's some more. Um, and then we talked about bond energy last time, how a single bond is longer but weaker than a double bond, which is 
longer and weaker than a triple bond. Or, in other words, a triple bond is much stronger and shorter than a double bond, which in turn is much stronger and shorter than a single bond. Okay. So hopefully now uh, you could draw all of these different Lewis structures. Um, of course, four and five are the two that we just went over in class. I would suggest you try to draw those. Um, there are some other polyatomic ions that you guys are familiar with, um, or should be familiar with, that I've uh, given you as a list to memorize, okay? Um, make, try to go over it with those and try to build these types of structures, because I can only imagine that I would put a couple of these on the next exam, you know? So, I mean, if you know how to do them, then those are like three points. Okay, so we've been drawing, okay, let me erase here. Can I erase? Has everybody got this stuff? Okay. So we've been drawing these structures, well, these, these uh, Lewis structures, if you will. We've been drawing these Lewis structures um, <coughs> on the board and the way we're representing them as is as if they were like pieces of paper or something, like flat objects that like, so like this, right? So we can see it all like this, but if I were to turn it like this, I don't see anything, right? But that's not the way that molecules are. Okay. In fact, let's build methane. So this representation of methane uh, uh, shows its structure more accurately than what the Lewis structure depicts. Um, and I will draw another <coughs> representation, known as a structural formula, that adequately represents this, or at least somewhat adequately, okay, on a two-dimensional surface. Okay, so hopefully um, you can see this little plastic thing that's in my hand, okay? This is representing methane, just like this is representing methane, CH4, CH4, okay? Notice the difference here, right? Whereas that it seems as if it's all in the same plane of the board, right? If you pass this around, if you don't mind, you can see that those four hydrogens aren't actually in the same plane, okay? And in fact, uh, we represent, it. so there's a problem with the way that we can represent things on a two-dimensional surface, okay? Um, because it's two dimensions, it's hard to represent things like a three-dimensional shape. So we have these rules that we have to follow that kind of emphasize um, different directional uh, uh, types of bonds, okay? So uh, let's draw this as if we were looking at it like that, okay? So the central atom there, and if you'll notice, When you look at that uh, compound that's going around, you'll see that two of the atoms actually are in the same plane. Or actually three of the atoms, but two of the hydrogens are actually in the same plane. So if we look at this, okay, so if I turn it like this, Hopefully you can see that this atom, this atom, and this atom, right? This atom, this atom, and this atom are all in the same plane, with this one sticking towards you and this one sticking towards me. Okay, does everybody see that? Okay, so there's one, what we call one going forward and one coming back. That's what we say. Okay, let's draw this representation on the board. Okay, so straight lines like we've been drawing mean that they're in the plane of the board. 
like that. Okay? So let's draw the other one. Like this. Notice, notice what this shows is it's also not at a 90 degree angle. Right? So if you look at that, it's a little bit more than a 90 degree angle. Right? Specifically, it's 109 and a half degree angle. Okay? That's a number you're going to have to know. Okay? 109 and a half. So, let's draw that second one like that. In fact, what you find is all the bond angles, if you will, in methane are 109.5 degrees. Okay? Okay, so now let's represent the going forward bond and the going backwards bond. So the forward bond is represented as a wedge. Like that. And the back bond is represented as a dashed line or a hashed line. So if you've got this in your hand, you might want to look at this and look at the picture that we've drawn on the board and try to um, see how we're actually representing them. Okay. All of the bond angles are 109 and a half. What did you say the one, uh, not the dashed one? <coughs> this one? Wedge. Mm -hmm. The wedge. Wedge bond. And that means it's going forward. So why why is this? Why does why do these bonds go into these particular bond angles in 109 and a half and not 90 degrees like the Lewis structure is telling us? Well, it's because of this um, idea, of course, electrons are negatively charged. Right? If I have an electron, I'm negatively charged. If there's another electron, that electron is also negatively charged. Okay? Well, there's this theory, Vesper theory, um, and it works pretty well, uh, that describes the shapes of these bonds, of these molecules, of the bond angles, um, that says, well, since there's electrons in a bond and electrons in the other bond, well, they don't like to be around each other because they repulse each other. So they try to get as far away from each other as possible. Okay? So if we, if we um, imagine an uh, atom to be a sphere, an atom to be a sphere, <coughs> and the most bonds you guys are going to have around the central atom is four, okay? Most bonds you'll have around the central atom is four. But if you imagine an atom to be a sphere and not like a box, kind of like what we represented it over there, you'll realize that the furthest way, um, um, furthest apart these bonds could be is not 90 <coughs> degrees, but 109 and a half degrees. So instead of sticking here and here and here and here, right? they can get a little farther away, right? 109 and a half is bigger than 90, okay? So um, that's what's going on. Okay, and that's all Vesper theory is saying. So let's go ahead and read some of these slides out to you, and maybe I can explain a little bit better what we're talking about. So anyways, molecular shape plays a large part in determining the properties and the shape of a molecule. Um, this is known as Vesper theory, which means valence shell electron pair repulsion, okay? Just like the name implies, it's the valence shell electrons that are repulsing each other, okay? That's why they're as far apart away as possible. They repulse each other because they're negatively charged. They don't like to be around each other. So this is used to predict the shape of molecules. And all electrons around the atom, central atom, arrange themselves so they can be as far away from each other as possible to minimize this electron repulsion. So here's three shapes that you want to become familiar with. 
this one here at the end is the tetrahedron, the tetrahedral structure. And in fact, that's the structure of this molecule here. There's a couple other ones. Uh, well, this one's linear. This one, it says triangular, but what it really should be saying is trigonal planar. Okay. Um, I don't know how many trigonal planar molecules we'll come into contact with in this class, but definitely linear molecules we will. Okay. And then there's another one, a couple other ones that I'd like you to know. Um, see if they come up soon. But for right now, um, let's just keep going along with these slides. So in a covalent bond, the bonding electrons are lo localized around the nucleus, and the covalent bond is directional, right? Just like these, they have a specific orientation in space, specifically 109 and a half degrees away from each other in this particular molecule. So ionic bonds, they're inherently different. There are these electrostatic forces that are sticking these like kind of spheres together, okay? Um, and they have no specific orientation. They just go in a three-dimensional array from the center, as far as you can imagine. Um, so again, remember the terms bonding pair, uh, two electrons shared by an atom non-bonding pair or lone pair are two electrons belonging to one atom, so the pair is not shared. Okay? And the maximal uh, separation between electron pairs is going to be four bonds, and that's the tetrahedral. Okay? So here's methane, this molecule that we've just described up here. Um, there are four shared electron pairs around the central carbon, right? So hopefully everybody can see that, right? One, two, three, four, or eight electrons shared around that central carbon, right? Four electron pairs. Uh, minimal repulsion is when the electrons are placed at the four corners of a tetrahedron, okay? This structure here, like this square pyramid, that's a tetrahedron, okay? So when uh, the atoms are placed in that orientation, they're as far away from each other as possible. Okay? And in that case, you get to be 109.5 degrees. And remember, all of these, of course, are going to be showing a full octet. So remember the wedge, the, the half bond, and the straight line, and what they mean. So let's consider a new, uh, a different type of molecule, a molecule that's shaped a little differently, um, but still a common molecule, um, ammonia. structure-wise or electronic structure-wise, but when you look at the actual structure, it's a little bit different, okay? But not too significant, but I'll show you, show you the difference.
trigonal pyramidal, okay? Because it looks like a pyramid, right? Kind of like a pyramid with three sides or three points at its base, okay? So it's a three, kind of like a little pyramid thing. But trigonal, of course, implies three, okay? So let's look at the electronic structure of ammonia and compare it to that of methane and then uh, indicate to ourselves why uh, ammonia and methane actually look different. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is build the Lewis structure of ammonia. How do we do that? Well, hydrogens must be on the outside because they only can make one bond. Nitrogen must be the central atom. Nitrogen has five valence electrons, like that. So it only needs three more valence electrons to fill its octet. So let's put those three in the form of hydrogen plus its electron. Like that. Let's build it.
all around here, we think of electrons as little particles, but they're kind of like, I don't know, some weird kind of force type thing, okay? So you can kind of think of them as like a force field type thing that's associated with all of this area here, okay? So when those electrons kind of are lone pairs, they're not stretched to be right in the middle, right? So they kind of just wander around. And that kind of makes these other bonds here get away from them even more, okay? So this is like the contraction due to the lone pair electrons up here. So lone pairs make need a lot of space. Yeah? Are the red ones and the black ones always going to be red? Always going to be? Yeah, over here, gone. Uh, not necessarily, but probably, okay? Almost almost always, but not necessarily. It always, it again always depends on the way I'm looking at this molecule. So let's try to draw, let's draw it from this way. It's like this. Like I can draw like, I can stand like this, right? And all my hands and legs will be in the plane, right? But if I stand like this, then they won't be. But I could stand like this, and one of them would be and one of them wouldn't be, you know? So these molecules can kind of do the same thing, <laughs> right? We could draw it, let's draw it to where we're looking at, looking at it like this. So how many bonds are going to be going forward if we're looking at zero, right? And how many are in the plane? zero too, right? So all of them are actually going to be uh, hash bonds going back. Let's draw that. Kind of like this, but we've drawn here. It's kind of looking, it's like we're looking up from down on top of it, actually. Um, so when we do that, be like that. And then the lone pair would Consider ammonia, there are four electron pairs around the central atom, three shared pairs, and one lone pair. The lone pair is more electronegative with a greater electron repulsion, so it takes up more area. Um, the lone pair takes one of the corners of the tetrahedron without being visible, and thus it distorts the arrangement of the, of the other electron pairs giving ammonia a trigonal pyramidal structure with a 107.3 degree um, bond angle. So let's go down to water now. So notice what we're doing. We're going from carbon to nitrogen to oxygen, okay? So this will be the last thing we talk about today. Um, but I'm going to go through this a little more quickly because we only got Okay, so the next one would be um, OH2, right? Oxygen has to be the central atom. One, two, three, four, five. I'm just going to draw it like this. So in actuality, water looks like this, okay? Kind of looks like a 
little boomerang. Okay? So in fact we call this the bent bent structure. Okay? Or angular you might hear it called. But bent is far more common. So what we would show in this structure um, is the oxygen being the central atom. Of course, it's got these two lone pairs, but they're like big bunny ears up here. Okay? Like that and like that. And then, so in order to show those in the plane, right, we're going to have to put it like this. And then that means that there's going to be a wedge and a dash. So if we're emphasizing those kind of bunny ears, we want to draw it like this. And the bond angle here is actually, would you imagine it to be bigger or smaller than 107.3 degrees? Smaller. smaller, right? And it is by about 3 degrees, 104.5 degrees. Okay? So this is bent. showing it like this, okay? Not emphasizing the uh, lone pair electrons. Okay? Does everybody see that? Okay, cool. Thanks, guys. Uh, if